Hi, this is the third part of a lesson on standard form and it's the final part. We're going to take a look at how to do calculations using standard form numbers and also a word or two of advice on using calculators and computers for standard form. Let's start with a simple example which shows us how we can multiply two standard form numbers if we don't have a calculator. Let's take 8.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and multiply it by 5 times 10 to the minus 4. The convenient way to do it is to group the two mantises together, 8.6 times 5, and multiply that by the product of the powers of 10. So 10 to the minus 19 times 10 to the minus 4. So 8.6 times 5 is 43. We've got 10 to the minus 19 times 10 to the minus, sorry, 10 to the minus 19 times 10 to the minus 4. Well, minus 19 plus minus 4 is minus 23. So the power of 10 is minus 23. So I've got 43 times 10 to the minus 23. That's not standard form, so to present the answer in standard form, let's say we divide 43 by 10 to get 4.3 that mantissa is now OK. If we've divided 43 by 10, we're going to have to multiply 10 to the minus 23 by 10 to compensate. And if we do that, it becomes 10 to the minus 22. It's less negative power. And that's the final answer. 4.3 times 10 to the minus 22 without using a calculator. What about dividing two standard form numbers? Well, let's show you how to do it. 8.6 times 10 to the 19 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 4. We'll group the mantises together, 8.6 over 5, and group the powers of 10 together. We've got 10 to the 19 divided by 10 to the minus 4. And we're going to multiply those two elements. 8.6 over 5 is 1.7 approximately. What about 10 to the 19 over 10 to the minus 4? Well, 19 minus minus 4 is 19 plus 4. So the answer is 10 to the 23, 19 plus 4. And there's our final answer. OK. What we're going to do now is look at addition and subtraction. Now this can be a bit messy. If you can use a calculator, you'll probably save yourself the risk of making a mistake. But let me show you the basic method for adding and subtracting standard form numbers. Go through this example for addition. And we've got 4 times 10 to the 13. We're trying to add 5 times 10 to the 15. And the problem is we've got different powers of 10, 13 and 15. And the trick is to change one of the numbers so it has the same power of 10 as the other and in this example what we're going to do is change 4 times 10 to the 13 so it's in a form which is something times 10 to the 15 the same as the other term well to change 10 to the 13 to 10 to the 15 I have to multiply by 10 to the 2 because I'm going to add 2 I've got to multiply by 100 if I increase 10 to the 13, if I increase it by a factor of 100, then I'm going to have to decrease 4 by a factor of 100 to compensate, to keep the overall value the same. That means I end up with 0 0.04 times 10 to the 15. And that's the same value, represents the same value as 4 times 10 to the 13. Now I hope the rest is easy. I hope you can see that. I've got something times 10 to the 15 plus something else times 10 to the 15. I'm going to factorise the 10 to the 15 out and I have 0.04 plus 5 all times 10 to the 15. And that, sorry, jump to slide. That gives us 5.04 times 10 to the 15. And we can use the same method if we want to subtract standard form numbers. Let's talk about raising a standard form number to a power. How about 5 times 10 to the 6, all cubed? Well, we can do the mantissa and the power of 10 separately. 
5 cubed can be worked out separately and we multiply that by 10 to the 6 cubed. Now 10 to the 6 cubed is simply 10 to the 6 times itself 3 times. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. So of course the answer is 5 cubed is 125 times 10 to the 6 cubed is 10 to the 18. And you can note the shortcut. If I want to raise 10 to some power to a, another power, 10 to the 6 all to the power 3, I just multiply the numbers together. 6 times 3 is 18. So 10 to the 6 all cubed is 10 to the 18. Let's get the final answer in standard form. I'll divide 125 by 100 to get the mantissa in the correct range, 1.25. If I divide the mantis by 100, I'm going to have to increase the 10 to the 18 by a factor of 100. And that means the final answer is 1.25 times 10 to the 20. Let's look at the reverse of raising to a power, taking a root. Let's look at the square root of a standard form number. How about the square root of 9 times 10 to the 6? You should know that a square root is equivalent to raising a number to the power a half. So, for example, the square root of 5 is the same as 5 to the power half. So our original expression can be written as 9 times 10 to the 6, all to the power half. Other roots can be done the same way. The cube root is the same as raising something to the power a third. The fourth root is the same as raising something to the power a quarter, and so on. So we've got this expression, 9 times 10 to the 6, all to the power half. Let's split it up. Mantissa can be separated out, 9 to the half, the square root of 9, 9 to the power half, multiplied by 10 to the 6 to the power half, that's the square root of 10 to the 6. 9 to the half, the square root of 9, obviously 3. How about the square root of 10 to the 6? Well, there's a couple of different ways to, to work that out. We can note that 10 to the 6 is 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3. The square root of 10 to the 6 is just going to be one of those 10 to the 3s. But the other way to do it is to remember what we learned on the previous example. 10 to the 6 to the power half gives us 10 to the power 6 times a half. We multiply the 6 by the half to give 3. Shown that here, 10 to the 6 times a half. And that gives us, whichever way we do it, 3 times 10 to the 3 as the final answer. Let's look at the another square root, the slightly harder one now, because I'm, want, I'm trying to find the square root of 9 times 10 to the 11. And you might note that when I multiply 11 by a half, as I did in the last example, I'm not going to get a, an integer, a whole number. I'm going to get 5.5. It's going to be a problem. How can I avoid that? Well, I can avoid it by changing this 9 times 10 to the 11. That's an odd power of 10. Changing it so it's something times 10 to an even power. And the easy option is to say, well, let's change that to the, the form here. 9... I'm going to increase 10 times, so it becomes 90, 10 to the 11. I'm going to decrease 10 times to compensate, so it becomes 10 to the 10. So 9 times 10 to the 11 is the same as 90 times 10 to the 10. And we're going to find the square root of that. We've now got an even power of 10. The square root of the mantissa is the square root of 90, 90 to the power half. The square root of 10 to the 10 10 to the power 10, all to the power half. The trick is to multiply the 10 by the half, which gives us exactly 5. And the final answer is 9.5 times 10 to the 5, roughly, approximately. The square root of 90 is approximately 9.5. OK. In practice, you usually use a calculator to deal with standard form numbers some points of advice. First of all, read your calculator's manual, because it will tell you how to enter standard form numbers. Make sure you know how to. Usually, there's a special key marked EXP or 
EE or 10X and you use this to enter standard form numbers but check your own calculator. And the typical example is this. If you want to enter 1.23 times 10 to the 20 on your calculator, what you actually key in is 1.23, you press the X key or whatever your calculator uses and then enter the 20. And that enters 1.23 times 10 to the 20. If you want to enter a negative power, you use the negation key. Don't try using the subtraction key to get the minus sign. So, for example, if you want to enter 1.23 times 10 to the minus 20, what you key in is 1.23, the X key, if you have one, or it's equivalent on your calculator, then the 20, and then you use the negation key, it might be marked plus minus, to make the 20 into minus 20 and then you've entered your standard form number. Here's a word of warning. Don't simply copy your calculator's output when you write down the answer. Some calculators often display an answer in standard form a bit like this, 1.34 superscript minus 35. Well, it represents a standard form number. It's not a standard form number when it looks like that. And if it says something like that on your calculator, what it actually means is 1.34 times 10 to the power minus 35. And you must make sure that you write down the value correctly. Don't just copy each character on your calculator's display. Interpret it as a proper standard form number. Final note, if you're using a computer, maybe a spreadsheet, if you want to enter standard form numbers, two ways of doing it. 7.5 times 10 to the 9 can be entered as 7.5 E9, or 7.5 times, that's an asterisk, shift 8, 10 to the power 9. Now the power symbol is a little hat, it's shift 6 usually. So either of these two will enter that standard form number. Well, that's about it. I hope you know more about standard form than you did at the beginning. And I hope it's useful to you when you use standard form to help you do calculations. Thanks for watching.